Michelle, yep. state of the organization. Okay. Hi, everybody. It's hard to believe this is the last time I'm going to be standing in front of all of you after eight years, which was supposed to be six years, but who's counting, right? Um, so today, one of my um, favorite uh, speakers passed. And he said, success is the result of perfection, hard work, learning from failure, loyalty, and persistence. Colin Powell. I had the opportunity to see Colin Powell speak about 16 years ago, believe it or not, at um, the International IPW, which is a international travel trade show. And we had some amazing speakers. Um, I, I was able to see Colin Powell speak and he was just a regular guy with an amazing mind. And so um, upon his passing today, I felt that, um, you know, he had some of the, the same goals and, and um, dreams that we all have. The Plymouth 400 anniversary may not have happened as we had planned, but tonight as we reflect upon the, the last fiscal year, and the few additional months we have seen in FY 2021, one thing is very clear. The 400th anniversary has produced lasting legacies and future opportunities beyond anything we could have planned or even imagined. Let me give you a few highlights of the legacies and opportunities Plymouth 400 has created for the future. First, we promoted the Plymouth 400 anniversary for eight years at international and domestic travel trade shows, often strengthening the reach as the Plymouth, Cape Cod, and Massachusetts delegations all carried our brochures and talked to tour operators about the 400th anniversary. The legacy of that investment will help as tourism recovers, especially with international travelers from Europe, where the 400th anniversary of Plymouth was commemorated alongside ours. Next, we forged new relationships and opened new dialogue with historians and colleagues in England and the Netherlands and in Shishigahama as they partnered with us over the years, creating a bond with our colleagues that has endless possibilities for the future. We also, most importantly, forged extraordinary relationships with Wampanoag people from Aquina, Mashpee, and Herring Pond, whose honest and uncensored accounts of their ancestors' experiences contributed to the inclusive and authentic nature of this 21st century commemoration. Special thanks to my colleague and friend, Linda Coombs, who worked tirelessly on behalf of the 400th anniversary forming the Wampanoag Advisory Committee and creating meaningful educational programming. Next, we saw collaboration on a grand scale, larger than Plymouth has ever seen. Plymouth 400 showed that the coming together of organizations, businesses, and especially the Plymouth Town Department heads, the Public Safety Committee, consisting of 60 local, state, and federal agencies led by former Chief Mike Botieri, was not only possible, but the planning done is a, now a blueprint for, for larger events in the future. We know what it takes to do a marathon-sized event in the oldest community in New England. Next, an unprecedented movement of volunteers cultivated near, over nearly 10 years yielded a groundswell of over 700 people from all over who signed up to be part of the Plymouth 400 anniversary. And from that legacy of the Plymouth 400 ambassador program um, came the Plymouth 400 ambassador program, which I was pleased to turn over to Amy Naples at the Plymouth Chamber and Lee Filson at Sea Plymouth to carry on with the training, deployment and deployment of town ambassadors at events and on regular weekends during the tourism season. So thank you for that, Lee. Thank you. 
we learned what it takes to run a successful retail operation. And Kelly is gonna just crawl under her seat now. Um, as a nonprofit organization, we sold tens of thousands of items of clothing and commemorative gifts, both at events and online. Special thanks to Kelly Parham who tackled a task that she had never attempted before and never intends to attempt again. <laughs> <laughs> Another legacy with public interest came media inquiries, lots of them. Plymouth 400 generated stories in well known and major media outlets in this country and around the world, and a social media presence that is still a lot active and relevant. Usually, there are three people that do marketing, PR, and social media. We have had Brian Logan doing all of this with great success, I have to add. And I would also be remiss if I didn't mention Caroline Quinn, who periodically we hired to help us to, um, to move the message forward. So Brian and Caroline, thank you so much. There were countless, another legacy, there were countless committee meetings with hundreds of participants across committees, including public safety and security, military, parking, transportation, Wampanoag Advisory, Hospitality, Education, Town Departments, and Ambassador Trainings. Many thanks to Jay Dunn, who recorded minutes from many of those meetings, and is still has a legacy of recording minutes for other organizations now, because she does such a good job, keeping the records meticulous for history's sake. And then there is the silver lining that we now know as virtual programming, because without it, well, I don't think we could have fulfilled our mission. Our virtual events are rich in historic, cultural, and civic education. The good work being done outside of these actual events that we had planned has now been highlighted and very well received. And although this goes beyond the end of our fiscal 2020, it is important to note that these accomplishments, which have found new audiences through um, to note these accomplishments, I'm sorry, which have found new audiences through virtual access and promotion. And here are some of the virtual legacies that we have are leaving. The Massachusetts Chronicles, the unprecedented history of Massachusetts for students takes a balanced view of some of Massachusetts and America's most historic moments. Through our partnership with Plymouth Public Schools and Bridgewater State University, and through the generosity of Bruce and Patricia Bartlett, 35 copies and an educator's guide went to every single public school in Massachusetts. Our story, virtual exhibit tour. We had the virtual exhibit, but we could not any longer tour, tour it around. So with the support of Smoke Signals Communications, Paula and Stephen Peters, Linda Coombs, and our friends at PAC TV, we were able to bring a virtual look at our signature exhibit. The link to the tour is available for viewing at our Facebook page and over 6,000 people have tuned in to date. Next, here it began, 2020 hindsight or foresight, the Indigenous History Conference, October and November, 2020. This programming hosted and supported by Bridgewater State University is a long time concept of our own board member, Linda Coons. With the assistance of Professor Joyce Rain Anderson of Bridgewater State and the incredible promotional and technical support of VSU and Fred Clark, this original conference was divided into nine segments, which aired in October and November of 2020. The first weekend registrations topped 1,600 viewers, and it will run again this fall. We just don't know what the time period is at this moment. Plymouth Then and Now is the one hour special that uh, program that NBC did for us uh, in November, December of this year. If you haven't looked at the link that I sent out to this program, it is well worth watching. If you wanna feel good about your time here spent as a board member, take a look at that one hour special because everything that I'm talking about now and that we have done is, is jam packed into that special. And they, uh, we have special thanks. Unfortunately, NBC, our NBC um, affiliates couldn't be here tonight, 
but we, we specially thank NBC's Maggie Baxter, who has been the heart and soul of our, really, of our relationship with NBC, and Charlene Bird, who has produced, who produced that one hour special, for their incredible attention and assistance to Plymouth 400. The Registry of Deeds, Colonial Records, Virtual Tour, PAC TV, Registrar John Buckley and Tim White planned a poster exhibit of the relevant colonial documents as we partnered with them to create a virtual look at those documents as introduced by a prominent member of our state and local community. We scheduled interviews with over 25 people highlighting these documents for generations and marking 2020 by bringing current leaders to the forefront of this commemoration. And John so sweetly put that program on every single one of these little thumb drives so that you all can take a copy of it with you uh, before you leave today. So thank you so much, John. Um, another legacy and another virtual legacy is the Plymouth 400 Conversations, which really came out of all of us sitting around Zooming with each other in our bedrooms um, with the staff and thinking, what are we going to do now? What do we do next? So one of the things that we didn't have on the docket was to recognize all of the work that had been done outside of Plymouth 400, um, books that were written and, and films that were made and just different historians um, who spoke. So, so much content that had been developed around the 400th anniversary, it made sense for us to highlight these authors, artists, and historians in interviews with our partner, again, at PAC TV. We did 11 episodes, I had never counted them before this has gone on, 11 episodes highlighting works, and all of the episodes can be found on our website, which will remain as a research site for years to come. And then we were able to do a couple of live events, which we were so grateful for. We were finally able to do the remembrance ceremony, which was the brainchild of um, one of our board members, uh, Brenton Simons. He is also the co-chair of the uh, commission, the state commission, acknowledging the great dying, which took the lives of tens of thousands of Wampanoag people, and the first winter, which claimed the lives of half of the Pilgrim colonists. The event was held at Pilgrim Hall Museum in the pouring rain. We were supposed to be outdoors. It was supposed to be, you know, it was just the, as Matt Martori always reminds me, the first of the four hundred. Um, but we did have it. We, we brought it inside. And that was the point at which uh, Donna and I had talked. And we decided, and, and she was very forth, forward thinking in this, where we announced that our joint project with Pilgrim Hall Museum would change in theme from Quadricentennial Park to Remembrance Park, honoring the lives lost in the Great Dying, which may be the first time that has been honored in any way. Uh, the first winter of the Pilgrims stay here in, in uh, the colony and their losses. And in 2020, to the COVID-19 losses that we all suffered and still continue to suffer. We believe this is the first monument honoring COVID victims in America, which could be the coolest thing um, for Plymouth, the, the community that's 400 years old, 401 years old, to also be the first community honoring COVID victims. And of course, the successful Plymouth 400 Maritime Salute on Labor Day weekend, which brought several ships to Plymouth Harbor all at once for the first time to join Mayflower too and highlight the maritime history of the colony and of the native people of the area. With games and activities, ship tours and excursions, we pulled off a successful event that was uplifting for all and was well received by the British ambassador, Senator Ed Markey and many other dignitaries who made their way here for that day. And let us not forget that we set things up for the future. Our One Small, Small Candle Award and Illuminate Thanksgiving highlighted the power of young people to affect positive change in the world. And then there's the Mayflower Autonomous Ship. I know she's not here yet, but she's coming. 
which we at Plymouth 400 worked with. We worked with those folks for eight years to make Plymouth, Massachusetts its home port and bring forward-facing technology to our 400-year-old town. Stay tuned for her arrival in the spring of 2022. We could not have done any of this virtual work without our star media and creative partners, many of whom are here with us today. Our signature sponsor, Shields Design Studio. Thank you, Mary, for all of your incredible work and donation. NBC and its family of outlets, Gannett and the Old Colony Memorial, WATD Radio, PAC TV, Hawk Visuals, and Denise McAfee Photography. Thank you all. We could not have been a virtual organization in any way, shape, or form without all of you. In closing, I want to say how important your support has been over these many years to me and to my staff. Ken, Terry, Jane, Mary, Tony, Monica, who's off on a tour of Europe right now. <laughs> um, former board member and vice president, former vice president Ed Santos, and the late Barry Young and Paul Cripps for their service to the board as the executive committee. We had countless hours of meeting and making decisions and figuring out what to do um, in the midst of a pandemic. And before that, figuring out what to do just in general. The board associates and honorary members of this body, I say thank you. To committee chairs, volunteers, and those who seemingly came out of nowhere at just the right time to help, and it happened over and over again. Thank you all so much. My sincere thanks to my friend Dusty Rose and the state commissioners. I especially want to acknowledge my staff, past and present, including Cheryl Soares, Sheila Fay, Peter Dubay, Nat Arada, and Christine Gallagher for their work through the years. Our two event planners, one of whom I think is gonna be here tonight or is here tonight, uh, Diana Scalpanetti, and especially Amy Belmore, who single-handedly put together the Maritime Festival. Amy, in my sincere gratitude and really my heartfelt affection for Kelly Parham, Brian Logan, I wasn't going to do this, Jay Dunn, and honorary staff member Caroline Quinn, who has supported us as needed every step of the way. Thank you all. It has been my honor and pleasure to serve as your executive director. And um, I can't wait to see what the new board does with all of this good stuff that we left for you to take care of. <laughs> Thank you all so much. So we're gonna say goodbye to all of you on Zoom because we have a short video that we wanna show, but we can't show it to all of you at the same time. But we will send a copy of it out to the entire board. Uh, so thank you very much, everybody that's on Zoom. We're going to say goodbye to you now. Bye. 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 Everybody. Thank Bye. you. Thank well you, done. Everybody. Bye. Well done. Well done, everyone. Okay. Take, take care. care. Bye.